You have a heart, Father, to see us whole, to see us healthy and well. You have a heart that was so compassionate that, Lord Jesus, you took all those horrendous, brutal stripes so that we could be healed. And so, Lord, we don't want to treat healing as some side issue in the Christian faith because we're commanded to preach the word, to heal the sick and to deliver the bound. So, Lord, please quicken your word to us today and help us, Lord, because we're in a very, very important season i believe for the restoration of the healing gifts and anointing thank you lord amen okay so i'm going to make a start um on this issue and we may need to go into it next time but there are different routes to cancer R-O-O-T-S and the roots of diseases are very very important the reason being that if you just say for example that you had someone had lung cancer and the root was smoking it's no good praying for them if they're going to go on smoking 30 cigarettes a day. Because the root is still in existence and Satan is a legalist. Please hear me. Satan is a legalist. God is not a legalist. God is not. But Satan is. And so if he has a legal um reason to um to see cancer in a person then he won't hold back because he comes to steal to kill and to destroy so please hear me i i didn't used to understand the difference between kill and destroy but there is a big difference because kill is like kill the body. But in the Hebrew, the destroy is to destroy the God image inside us, you know, to cause a, a loss of faith, to destroy our faith in God. And I've, I've heard people before who lose their faith in God because a loved one has died with cancer or some other disease. So the roots are very important. And I'm going to give you several roots. This is by no means extensive, but it's us exploring the subject. So one root that is very common is shock and trauma. Now, in this life, most people have times when they go through shock and trauma, various things, accident, bereavement, loads of different things. Now, what I've discovered over years is that when we have a shock, it temporarily paralyzes the immune system. So at that moment, the immune system that is supposed to be dealing with the cancer cells is paralyzed and the whole of your inside is all jiggled up and um, it's like um, 
at the same time, the emotions are probably also all at sea. And so I'm just going to uh, say to you that if you are struggling with, with cancer ever, or you know someone who is, you're praying for someone who is, one very big question to ask is, in the past two years, has there been a major trauma? Because that needs dealing with. Now, I'm not going to go off into diabetes, but I've, I've discovered that diabetes can come in the same way. In other words, where the immune system's not working, you, everything gets jiggled up in your chemicals. And if there's diabetes in the family line, it might go there instead of the cancer. But um, that's number one. Now, all of these could be an hour's teaching, but I'm trying to give an overview at the moment. So the other thing is her hereditary cancer. So when there has been cancer in the family, we know that first of all, there can be weaknesses vulnerabilities that have passed down but also there can be familiar spirits there can be um that because we don't when we we know that we inherit characteristics from our parents but what lots of people don't realize is that it's not just their nature like bad temper or something but it's it's also the spiritual dna that gets passed down and that um i'll look at in a minute so one thing on the family line is is just general vulnerability and weakness but the other thing is generational blessing and curse now, I'd like to spend maybe an hour on that um, because it's, um, it's come into play a lot as I've dealt with people who are sick. So the, um, the passages to look at in the Bible are Deuteronomy 27 and 28. Now, at the end of Deuteronomy 27, what we have is a list of sins that carry a curse. And it's, it gets more serious. So this is a curse pronounced by God himself. So that they are very, very powerful. And that, that is a serious, but the agreement of the people, it says, and everybody, everybody said, Amen. So it's like the, um, the whole um, of the agreement yes, these sins deserve a curse, has given these different roots a lot of power. And so I say it needs a, a whole session on this. But in Deut Deuteronomy 28, in the first 14 verses are the blessings that follow obedience, how God wants to bless us in so many ways. But from verse 14 from 15 onwards is all the ways that a curse can outwork itself. 
and one of them is is a, a lump, a tumor. And so what we can see is that that has given the evil one a very, very strong legal case to bring sickness. And tumor is particularly mentioned. Um, I'll just see Deuteronomy, we could just look at it a second. But basically, it comes Deuteronomy 28, but it basically divides this whole thing, divides into seven main sections, which we will look at. So just starting at verse 15, if you will not obey the voice of the Lord your God, as is Deuteronomy 28, 15, being watchful to do all his commandments, then all these curses shall overtake you, come upon you. So God's given the warning for disobedience and rebellion and the things that cause it. So without going too deeply into it, the main roots and the main outworkings of generational curse. So the main roots are idolatry, occult practices, sexual sin, and, and particularly deviation, perversion, and the shedding of innocent blood. These are the main headings, if you like, there are subheadings under that. But if we look um, at chapter 28 and verse 27, these curses are pretty horrendous. But in verse 27, because we're thinking about cancer today, the Lord will smite you with the boils of Egypt and the tumors and the scurvy and the itch from which you cannot be healed. Now that's pretty strong, that. And we'll go into that in a minute because of course, the other verse you need to put down is, is Galatians 3, 13 and 14, that Christ has purchased our freedom from the curse. So in Christ, there is um, a release. But you see, there is a naivety in the church as if all these things are automatic. And, and they're not automatic at all. They are, um, we have to release our faith into the healing promises. We have to release our faith into the deliverance promises. We have to release our faith into the breaking of curses. And um, we're not largely taught like we should be. And so the main, if, if, if you read in Deuteronomy 28, you will find these are the main, seven main areas that the curse expresses itself. Number one, mental and emotional breakdown. Now this is happening everywhere. There is so many young men committing suicide. There is so much confusion over gender. There's so many people on depressive drugs. It's, it's, a, it's, it's a scourge, but it's a scourge because of a godless society. 
Number two. Chronic sickness. Now, that is sickness that it is something that's, that's ongoing. It's not like you get a bout of flu, you get over flu, and then it's as though you've never had it. A, a chronic sickness is something that um, sticks around like arthritis for example. It's a chronic sickness. People live with arthritis. And although you, you might get some pills to try and alleviate the pain, you've still basically got arthritis. And that, again, is quite generational. But cancer is also, um, can be included in chronic sickness. The third one, because we're just doing this overview, is family alienation and division. Now, just look at our nation. Just look at how many marriages end up in divorce or never even begin with marriage. The broken families, the broken children, the children who, however resilient they might seem, their little hearts register rejection when they are without one parent. And so this, the, these are serious things. Financial insufficiency number four. So financial insufficiency doesn't mean you've got no money necessarily but it means you never have enough it means that supposing your great aunt left you 500 pounds so you suddenly think you've come into some money then you that that very time your car's a write-off and you've forgotten to pay your insurance and and you don't get that money that as an excess so it is a real um ongoing thing you never get ahead and I've heard people say when we've prayed into the breaking of curses I've heard people say it feels like you're in a maze and you think you've found your way out and then it's a dead end and you're totally frustrated because you're no nearer than you were to finding your way out, another block. So that was number four, financial insufficiency. Number five, are women's complaints. Um, so that can include menstrual things, it can include barrenness, miscarriage, uh, premature birth, infant death, um, but particularly women's issues. The next one, number six, is a history of accidents. So everyone might have an accident at one time or another, but this is consistent, recurrent. You fall off the ladder, you break your arm, and then you, um, you're just quite innocent party in a queue and someone hits in the back of you and you've got whiplash and and then you, you know you catch your foot in a pothole and twist your ankle it's like it's like a series of accidents it's not just having an accident and the last one is premature death 
and suicide. And Galatians 3, 13 and 14, it's really important that we grasp this. And I have got some CDs that go into this a bit deeper if anyone wants to ask me for them. Um, it's a series of two because there's so much to say about it. But the main thing is that if the curse is in place of chronic sickness, um, and if, if four of these are in operation, not just in your life, but in your fam larger family as you can see it, then it is worth praying. Um, it is worth praying. But if this curse is in place, then as you're praying, there'll be a legal resistance from the enemy. Can I put it that way? It's legal. He, he understands legal right and he will exercise it um and so that's an issue so um those are the seven seven things where i've said that blessing and curse are part of the roots because if we don't deal with the root, then unless we're operating in a high level gift of faith, which or healing or miracles, and, and, and that almost needs an atmosphere for that, then it's going to, um, it, it's just going to, feel oh god you know why aren't you answering prayer so the other curse that i want to mention so if you're making notes is freemasonry now this is so so relevant in terms of cancer because many men who are in the Freemasons make curses. At every level they go up, they make fresh curses that implicate um, their families and different parts of the body. And one of those curses is a filthy lump. Imagine cursing your family with a filthy lump. And it's one of the Freemasonry uh, curses of which there are many. There are many, many um, parts of the body implicated. And if there's been people in your family, in the Freemasons, or you're praying for someone, um, this is, and you're looking for a root, this is one question to ask, was there anyone in your family in the Freemasons? And then there are definite, um, there are definite renunciations that need to be made to break the legal right of the enemy, because in the end, um, spoken curses, spoken with spiritual authority are extremely powerful. And so, yes, in a minute, we'll just have opportunity for a question, but that is number four, Freemasonry curses, one of which, is filthy lump. 
two more things I've got, and it's not an exhaustive list, but abuse. That can be verbal abuse, which can be um, it well, it can be it is emotional as well. It, it, it's it's not nice. But there is actual abuse of your body, like smoking, like drugs, other other horrible other horrible ways that people abuse their bodies. So young girls, a lot of young girls now are getting cervical cancer because they're abusing their bodies with sexual partners. Um, so that's serious uh, and not a little, not a little one. So um, I'm going to add to that now because it's not been intentional abuse, but what they've discovered with this kind of, I gave those breast cancer statistics, and what they've discovered is that the spike protein is that the vaccinations gave are actually uh, quite um, quite deadly in 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 the sense of of that they can bring cancer on uh, in two ways: the spike protein for one, but also the the antibodies um, begin to take over your general antibodies um, and you begin to lose your God-given immunity to cancer. So I'm saying another thing is to say to people, if you can't find the root, I, ju I just wonder if you may have had the vaccination because we'd like to pray for you um, that you, you know, you didn't know that this was going to affect God's order inside your body. And the last thing I've got down before we go on to how to deal with it and maybe questions is the food chain and my personal feelings about microwave ovens. Now, many years ago, when microwave ovens first came out, I had, a, I'm an only child, came very late in the life of my parents, and I had a lovely dad, and he, he wanted to bless me, and he bought me a microwave. And from the beginning, I had this natural, aversion to it and I felt so bad about it because I knew that my father had wanted to bless me and I thought I don't know what's the matter with me <laughs> but I didn't hardly use it at all I sometimes did a baked potato um, because it was thick <laughs> um, but I've later learned that there was something in my aversion that was the Holy Spirit's warning. So these are the two things that I've learned that may want, you know, you, you, you might have understood this anyway, but it so jiggles your food in the microwave oven, it jiggles all the molecules and atoms are all about. And your body, when you eat it, then it doesn't recognize what you've eaten as being a God given food. And so it doesn't know what to do with it. So it doesn't nourish you. But 
worse than that, well, they've been banned in Russia for quite a long time because it's like a form of nuking your food. It's like, now, I feel, what I feel in my heart is that um, obviously God's protecting us, but I do feel that God never intended the food to be jiggled about like it is. And it's like it's made it G, it, it's like it makes it GM modified. And uh, I'm, I'm just going to suggest that where you have the option between the microwave and your oven, please use, please use your oven. I know we're all into time-saving devices. <laughs> Thank goodness for some of them. But I, d I don't possess a microwave. And there's times I miss things like um, heating up or something like that. But do you know what? I feel a great peace about not having one. And so you can take that on board or not. But the food chain has got so many chemicals in them. I've started looking at everything I buy now. And if there's more than a few things that I don't even know how to pronounce, <laughs> I've got a clue what they are, then I don't get it. I put it back down again. Processed food. You know, there was, I was going to buy my grandson, Leo, some um, little fairy buns from the supermarket because he loves them but I just turned it over and had a look at the ingredients honestly they went on about 10 lines because some of the ingredients needed a line to themselves <laughs> it was such long words that I haven't got a clue what they were. I just thought, I can't buy in these. I thought, have I got lazy not making my own little buns and just picking up a packet? So I hope that that helps you because I'll tell you something. You're going to come across someone who needs prayer. You know, there's a lot of people abused their bodies by just sunbathing without cream years ago. And, um, you know, just that, just trying to see, well, what, what's, what's behind this? This cause and effect, there isn't just effect. And so I found that if I deal with the roots, then there's a really strong chance that mixed with faith, dealing with it, continuing to pray, that the healing takes place. So we're going to look at how you treat it. But I wondered if anyone's got a question before we just go on to treating these, um, how we deal with it, how we pray, how we prepare. But has anyone got a question or a comment or something to add? Because, you know, we, we want to hear from you if you do. No? Is that all clear? Oh, you've got a question. Richard and Lynn, unmute yourself, and if I can, I'll answer it. Hello, Brenda. It's a comment, really, on what you said about microwave ovens. I absolutely, completely agree with you. 
And when food is uh, microwaved, the actions of the microwave radiation destroy the enzymes. So there is no nourishment in the food that you eat out of a microwave. Mm -hmm. That's a helpful comment because it, you, you're not hearing this much about mm -hmm. microwaves. And I'm sure when, do you know, I used to love, 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 love going out for a meal in a restaurant. I, let me off the hook cooking. But, you know, sometimes now I'm thinking this is so over hot. This has just been come out the microwave. And then I don't, I don't enjoy it the same. And uh, I've started appreciating home cooking and other people's home cooking as well and think you know yeah we, we're you know we've got so used to these time saving devices but they're not all good for us so is may there any yes may I ask a question please yes, Brenda you Thank you. Um, I know it may be a bit complicated, but, but Freemasonry is in our family, in my family. And I just, the question is, you know, you say about renouncing all the levels, and I don't know how far my father went into Freemasonry, but I know I've done quite a lot of that. But it, it always makes me wonder how specific or how detailed, you know, how how much you have to go into that and I I'm never quite sure whether I've done enough you know <laughs> yeah. I covered that one or have I you know it's, I don't know well I, I've got um a book which you might have which is Christian free yourself something like that from Freemasonry and it goes through the whole 33 degrees the shocking the the curse is absolutely shocking. But what happened, I'll just tell you just something that happened. Um, my daughter married before this husband. She married a guy and later found out that his father was a Freemason. And he was the grand master of the lodge. Mm -hmm. And you know, we didn't, we didn't know. And um it was um it was pretty horrible, you know, really what happened, but after after they divorced, because he went this guy went off and married another woman and had uh, well he went off with another woman before they were married and she aborted twins it was all a horrible story but we decided that we needed to break the freemasonry of julie because of the one flesh union with her husband and do you know, although she hadn't taken any oaths and curses and, you know, hated it, it was interesting because she, she cried and cried and cried when we were breaking these curses and her hand got paralysed in, um, in the Freemasonry handshake where the thumb comes in, into the middle of the palm. And it would it took some minutes to free mm. this. And she mm -hmm. wasn't even directly involved. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So what I'm saying is it's made me realize that this is far more serious. Mm. Mm. And it made me realize how serious it is. And we maybe need a whole session on it. Um, there might be people who are more experienced than myself although I've dealt with quite a bit but this book is this thick to deal with the curses that they 
that they speak at every level. And Sorry, yeah. Brenda, they, is that the Yvonne Kitchen one or is no, it no. Derek Roberts? Not Derek Roberts. I think it might be Derek Roberts. Yes. Yeah. Okay. Right. Thank yeah. you. Sorry. I remember. But um the thing the thing is that um the um they're so powerful because they are spoken with demonic authority. You see, curses get spoken with like the authority of a husband or the authority of um, a school teacher, even a pastor. But you know, when you've got a demonic influence behind what's spoken, um, it's strong and so yeah I, I uh, you know you'll have to write to me if you're feeling that it would be helpful to understand it better not even if you've got it in your own family but so that you know how to deal with people because it's in the church this is the sad thing and Although I'm not, I'm not trying to frighten anyone, but many of the old, like, C of E churches were built by Freemasons. The black and white floors are a giveaway where they have, like, like a chessboard type effect. Um, and they usually bury something in the foundations and I, I this is true story now um, that I had um, a friend she lived in Wales and there was they weren't into Freemasonry but the, the, uh, the, the main Freemasonry lodge of Wales was round the corner from their church with the pastor and his wife and she got breast cancer and we started to to pray and this came up about this freemasonry lodge but she ended up coming back to me she she prayed and actually the lord the lord healed her because we broke that curse but she came back later because two men in their church, we broke it over her personally, but two men in a church got breast cancer. Men. I, mean, I didn't even know men could, but I realized then if it's in a church, it needs to be more than just praying for a person. You know, the whole church needs cleansing. And uh, and the curses need breaking. Yeah. So, Sylvia. Hi, Brenda. Sorry I was late on. We've got a mask right. in the area. Couldn't get on. Um, yes, this Freemason thing is very interesting because my cousin, her husband, his dad, Mitty, his name was, was one of the founders of Oxfam. And he was honoured for his work with Oxfam. He died a few years ago, but to cut a very long story short, uh, he was a grandmaster and my cousin's dad was a, a, a grandmaster as well. And it, because of the men taking the oaths, it affects the female line. Yes. And he had a sister in Ireland and the, the, the lady and the two children were burnt to death. My cousins never had a settled relationship. The family have never been settled. And although her husband now is born again and has renounced it all, and he actually cut him out of his will, the father cut it, my cousin's husband out of his will because he unearthed a lot about Freemasonry. But uh, yeah, uh, it's quite a, a lot of problem. I don't want to uh, upset anybody, but it does need dealing with. Thank you. So yeah. those of you who don't know Sylvia and... Ralph, they uh, run the healing rooms for um, a large area in most of the UK. So, um, yeah, so they're working a lot. So thank you, Sylvia. OK, well, let's try and get on to the cure. Um, <laughs> let's get 
on to how to deal with this. I've just asked, Robbie, are you still on? Robbie Baines, are you still on? Yes, I'm here, Brenda. Can you just unmute yourself? Had you anything to add to that? Because you you pray a lot for people. Had um, you anything you wanted to add to that list? I think I think you've covered the list, but I would again um, say about Freemasonry. People don't realise because they feel that it's just um, entrepreneurial. You know, we've got people in our family. In Ireland, the Orange Order as well, that's exactly the same. You need to break, people need to be broken from that. But they just feel it's entrepreneurial. They're helping society, raising money for this, that, and the other. And then they gradually start going up the chain, you know, and getting higher and higher. And I think that's when um, demonic influence really, really comes in. And, you know, it's got to be broken. But... No, I would just agree with everything you've, you've said this morning. And But I also, I just feel you're going to talk about the cure now, but also people mustn't get, Jesus died such a horrendous death, didn't he, for us to be free of all this stuff. And, and the power of the name of Jesus and the blood of Jesus. And, you know, he's broken the curse and we can get free from this and we can yeah. get others free. It's just so, so powerful. I just just want everybody to be filled with such hope as you talk about the cure, because there is just hope, isn't there? Such hope in Jesus. Yeah. 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 That's great. That's great, Robbie. So we, we might get you on to talk about Freemasonry more, more deeply um, at some point, if you'd be willing. Okay. Okay, so let's just look. start looking at the good news because the Lord says, I am the Lord who heals you. That's who he is. That's his name. It's not just what he does. I think this is important. It isn't just what he does. It's who he is. He is the healer. He is the Lord who heals you. He is the one who um, has paid a price I can't. I don't like to think about the lashing. I don't like to think about how horrendous it was. But what I do know is that Pilate thought he was innocent. Um, in the natural, crucifixion was horrendous enough without the scourging. But God, God was thinking about you. God was thinking about us. And um, I think I've, I've said it before that the, the 39 stripes, there are 39 major diseases from which every other disease stems. So God wouldn't let him have the one more 40 or the one less. 38. He had the full 39. And we can only we can only say, Lord, I don't want one of them to be in vain. I don't want one of them to be something that we don't lay hold of the power of what you did. So, okay, here's an overview list of the uh, treating. Um, cancer dealing with the root so this is the simplified version all of them could have longer so where repentance is needed it you must begin there so if there's been freemasonry if there's been um 
family disobedience, rebellion, if there's been abuse of the body, if there's been, um, if what we've said now about microwaves, you know, you might want to say to the Lord, I'm sorry. I'm really, really sorry. And, you know, repentance is a big, um, it, 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 it's a big removal of the devil's legal ground. It's a massive, it takes, it takes the rug from under his feet. And there needs to be a thorough renunciation of everything that could come like from family background. So I, I have a, in the healing manual that we prepared, we have a generational iniquity prayer. And we have a prayer, um, not thorough, not a whole book, but just dealing with Freemasonry to some extent. So repentance. And then if we understand that these cancerous cells are malignant. Now, I want to tell you that it changed my opinion about malignant when I was in Spain because the name, one of the names for the devil himself is El Maligno, the malignant one. El Maligno. The malignant one. And so I began to see something very demonic on this whole malignancy. It's like the devil's come and messed up what God has put. And so I believe that it's what. What I do um, is curse the cancer because I'm speaking or you're speaking with the authority of the Holy Spirit and God. So if demonic authority speaking is so powerful, I believe that us speaking with faith by the power of the Holy Spirit is more powerful. More powerful. And we have to not have an identity crisis. We've got to know who we are. We're not under these things. We are more than conquerors. We are. Um, his children, we are people who God has commissioned to go out and heal the sick. We're not usurping our authority. We're recognizing our authority and using it. So we mustn't have an identity crisis. We must rise into our identity as those who God can use. These signs shall follow those who believe. That crosses age, gender, race, denomination. These signs shall follow those who believe they shall lay hands on the sick and they shall recover. Now, if I said, who thinks that Jesus tells lies, you, nobody would put their hand up. But we act like it. It's not quite, <laughs> but that's, I think that that's because we've probably all had our disappointments because we're learning and, and the Lord was anointed without measure. Um, but anyway, what I'm saying is 
I'm I I will um pronounce a curse on the cancer cells on every one of them root and branch root that we've talked about and branch and the curse may go something like this i curse every cancer cell with sterility so it cannot multiply see i will curse the cancer cell with immobility so it can't spread and metastasize or whatever the word is i i curse the cancer cells to wither from the root the tumor and to wither up and to die but at the same time i will bless the immune system i will bless the cells with to carry the anti um anti cancer genes they 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 uh, each cell should have two anti onco genes <laughs> and so I bless those cells to be working and i bless those cells to um i i bless the immune system with wisdom because somehow it's missed something's got through but i will bless those cancer cells with the i will bless the um immune system against those cancer cells with a wisdom to recognize them and deal with them and say this is your god given uh, just fundamental task in the body and and i bless you to with wisdom and with strength and uh, and i will I will do that. I have missed out that after the repentance if there was a trauma I will cut the trauma bonds which could have been the start of the cancer we cut the tr the trauma off spirit soul body birthright and just bless the body to keep functioning well keep functioning as god has ordained and so this blessing and then i will say i encourage the people to bless their immune system for the next 40 days now 40 days is the gestation period of a fly <laughs> satan is the lord of the flies <laughs> and so it stops them just sort of reemerging and it also is like taking your pills people take their pills for a lot more than 40 days so um now the other the obviously we're asking god to just marinate them with the healing virtue to to just completely um to just completely immerse the body and and any stray cells to just completely immerse them with the healing power of Jesus now the other thing i want to mention at this point and it's um i'm going to tell you why now this as it happens 
isn't a frankincense bottle, but the frankincense bottles are about this size. They're horribly expensive for the size. But let me tell you why they're so expensive. You might want to make an odd note of this because it's mind boggling, really. But in the frankincense are very, very tiny molecules. I think that's what they call them. I'm not scientific. And they're so minute that they can pass through all the tissues, the cell walls, and into the cells. And it's like there isn't, as far as I know, anything other than frankincense, which can actually penetrate the blood brain barrier. So it's particularly good for any brain issues. Um, it's a God given oil. And so you can inhale those molecules and they'll pass to the brain. If you inhale them within two seconds, it's so vaporous, it'll be at your feet in less than two seconds. <laughs> now, I can hardly believe this, and I'm not a scientist, so don't fall out with me. But this is what I pulled off the internet. One drop, one drop, contains approximately 40 million trillion molecules. One drop. 40 million trillion can you believe that <laughs> now i understand that we have in our bodies about a hundred trillion um cells and so one drop of frankincense has got 40 million trillion it means they can Cover your cells 40 times over. <laughs> and um, it only takes one molecule of the right kind to open a receptor site and communicate with the DNA to put things right, the cellular function. So it's got a effect on the body and on the emotions and um, so this is what it said with what I pulled off it can reprogram miswritten information in the cellular memory in the DNA and when improper coding in the cellular memory occurs, it can lead to misfunction, cause disease, including cancer. So it's all essential oils that God has given. You see, there is a problem with chemotherapy. It's a poison. And it destroys the good along with the bad. It is not selective. And it begins to put out the immune system that God has put there. Um, as well as making people feel very poorly. And... I know people have been healed through it, but many people have suffered a lot and not been healed. And what I'm saying is that I, somewhere in my spirit, I believe God's put everything here on the earth in a good sense that we need. God's put 
these wonderful essential oils like frankincense, like lavender, like myrrh. Um, so these, these ones in here that I picked up belonged to Anne. And uh, this, for example, this is frankincense and myrrh. And you can buy frankincense in a carrier, it's usually olive oil. But if you buy the real undiluted frankincense, then it can, just a little bottle that size can be up to 80 pounds. But if you're really, really poorly, um, it's 80 pounds well spent and can use it for lots of other things. This is lavender. I try and keep lavender as well. That's just wonderful for all sorts of things. Now, I'm, I'm a novice in these things. I'm not a specialist in these oils. But I do feel that everything that God has created is good. And most man-made things have a downside somewhere. But this is, I, I don't want to confuse you with science. But these are a couple of things I highlighted. Essential oils lift the body frequency to levels where disease can't exist. Can't exist. And so every essential oil, if you're making notes, contains three components. It will cleanse the receptor cells. Number two, it will erase incorrect information in the cellular memory. And thirdly, it will restore God's original information for health. And so it's, it's, it's doing different things that are all good. And so I believe that, that using these essential oils without your faith being in them, but in using them with prayer can really, really be helpful. Um, now, Demonic spirits don't like essential oils. <laughs> There's one good reason. <laughs> That's one good reason to use them because the high frequencies are too much for them. <laughs> and they sort of repel, you know, like they're like, um, you can get insect repellents and mosquito repellents. Well, essential oils are demonic repellent. Hallelujah. And uh, so, yes, I think we've got some learning to do at this time. And um, at, at, at the last thing I'll add is that ongoing research into frankincense that's been going on has shown that by adding one to two drops of myrrh, and it's interesting because the wise men brought gold frankincense and myrrh, by adding two drops of myrrh to your frankincense, it, it, it upgrades by 10 times the effectiveness of the frankincense. Well, wow. so 
that's just some of what's on this paper that I've pulled off. Because I am serious with the Lord to see to see disease, but particularly cancer under the sovereign power of God to see it, you know, overcome because I, I can just see in the spirit like, like there's going to be so much need out there. And we've got to get it together. We can't just leave it to the healing rooms. They'll do the best. I know you will, Sylvia and Ralph. But you can't be everywhere. Churches, not all churches are doing the James 5 and anointing with oil. Not you know, even things like L.O. Grange, like you might have a lot of money to pay and a, and a long waiting list. There shouldn't need to, to be this because we are those who believe. And the signs follow us, not the other way around. We're not meant to follow the signs. The signs are meant to follow us so i hope you found that helpful um yeah there's a lot really we've just skirted over the top of it but we may we may have time for one or two questions if anyone's got any or comments yes annette You've really touched my heart today, Brenda. I could cry. I could I could cry because me too, healing is so important. And we do need God more than ever. We ever thought we need him in these days mm -hmm. with so much sickness and so much disease and uh, uh, Brenda, there was one thing you didn't mention. Yes, come on then. And, uh, I have a friend who's younger than Robert with dementia. Yeah. It's awful. And so many people under 60 with dementia. <laughs> And we don't know what is causing dementia in such younger people. My daughter Keziah's nursed a, a woman under 50 with dementia. It's horrid. <laughs> and it's, it's like it's overtaking cancer. It's... <laughs> Is is good that we're crying about it, bless you, Annette, because you know God's got those tears now in His bottle, and uh, I, you know it, it's the beginning of Him moving, and I'm sure that with all this dementia, it's linked to things that we don't know what they're giving us, like in flu jabs and other jabs and... and so that's why i wanted to ask you brenda dear brenda how do we how do we pray you know how do we pray in this in the light of this situation mm -hmm. and uh um well it's just, just so horrid yeah. it's just just so horrid i'll just say that i've i've been exercised and this is the last thing God said to me. All right. And this is important. Please, please, everybody, don't, don't go off. I said to the Lord, I, 
you didn't tell me to pray for the sick. You said heal the sick. And I don't want to just pray for the sick. The sick of mind or body or anything else. And It looks as if Brenda's dropped out. Yeah, I think Brenda's dropped out, everybody. So if you can just hold on to your questions and I'll um I will see. She might just try to get back on. I'll take a look. Could I just say, um, Annette, if you can hear me, she's Yudoka. Yes, yes. Yeah, just good, about morning, this Yudoka. good morning, dear. This dementia issue, there's, you know, there's now a thing called juvenile dementia that comes to young children because they spend so much time on computer games and on the internet. So there's a juvenile dementia. So you can see down the line, years to come, dementia is going to affect people at younger and younger ages. Yes. So another another aspect of you know the things we do, we don't look at the consequences. Um, you know, so that's that's another important thing to remember. Even mm -hmm. You know, I can't, the reason why I'm weeping and I'm so in touch with what everything Brenda shared this morning is that the Lord never said the Bible doesn't say that we will die suffering from sickness and disease you know it doesn't it doesn't speak about that you know we you know we, it, we you know we, we're supposed to be persecuted for our faith not believers who are supposed to take the be on the front line in a battle against the enemy dying with sickness and disease that really really gets to me Can I just make a comment as well, just going back a little bit to microwaves. If we are looking at what's happening in society with electricity bills, which are going up and up, it's a very, I believe it's a very subtle way of getting people because I hear that a lot of people are using microwaves mm -hmm. because it's quicker using uh, less electricity. So therefore they're saving money. I just think we need to be aware that that is another way that the enemy is attacking. Um, is attacking us, you know, um, and, 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 and is attacking society, um, the bigger picture. I okay, Brenda's back now. Back to you. Okay. Thank you. Brenda, are you there? Seems like we've got internet issues this morning. My internet, I couldn't get on my laptop, I still can't get on it. Brenda's struggling to join. Ah, oh, there you are, Brenda. Yes, unmute now. Just unmute now, Brenda. I've no idea what happened then. No, the enemy didn't want you to share what you were going to say. Yeah, because everything's in order. Mm. What I will say is that the Lord said that he wants, he wants to be manifest again in healing in his church. But he said what he wants to see is a restoration of the fivefold ministry coming together. The, in other words, the full representation of Christ, mm -hmm. the fivefold, the the prophetic apostolic teacher evangelist pastor and what he was saying was that the this is his order all of them represent some different aspect of christ and who he is and none of us are complete without all being together 
Mm. And if we'll all submit to one another and not think that our particular five-fold appointment is more important than anyone else's, and we'll submit to one another in love and respect, then we will, he will release and that this is part of the new wineskin that I hadn't considered. I just felt that the wineskin was the priesthood of believers acting, but the Lord said that in Ephesians, where it shares about the fivefold, it says that they are operating for the equipping of the saints for the work of the ministry. The very thing that you want needs the fivefold to release it fully. And so I am I'm, I'm working on this in in my heart and in seeking to bring some fivefold counsel together. Um, but it's very early stages yet. Don't think the devil likes it because I do think it's quite a big key. And uh, so we, we just keep praying into that. But meantime, we just have to walk in the light we've got. Mm. And then we'll get more light. We, it's like your headlights. If I'm going from here to London, my headlights don't show me all the way to London. <laughs> show me the next bit ahead. And I have to drive into that and then the light moves on. And I feel that if we'll walk in what he's given us, then he will show us more. Mm -hmm. Amen. Richard and Lynn, you had a question, and, and we'll have Sylvia's comment or question, and then it's half half past 11, so we'll say thank you for coming on. All right, what, what is... Um, ju just three, three practical things. Um, regarding dementia, um, I've been looking into this as I have done with many other health issues. And I think the first thing that highlights for me is you have to look at the lifestyle. That's one thing. Um, to consider that the brain is made up of fats and water. So on a practical level, um, as Laura says many, many times about filtered water, because other waters can be toxic. But looking at fats and water, uh, when God in the garden looked at everything he had made, he said, it is good. So things that are good for the brain are coconut oil, avocados, olive oil, not other oils that are bad for you. You have to look into this and do your own research. And grass-fed butter, as opposed to grain, cattle uh, fed on grain. Then. Um, on frankincense, um, there are some wonderful reports out there that uh, women with breast cancer who massage their breasts with frankincense oil, and that is according to how the Lord leads you, how many drops you would use and in what carrier oil you would use. I, I can't go into that now, but they have seen great reports of tumours shrinking with yeah. massaging their breasts with frankincense oil. And then the other thing just to say is that we use this, it's um, a frankincense and myrrh anointing balm. And it's wonderful to use when praying with people. Great, that's, <laughs> that's a lovely contribution. Thank you, we appreciate that. Right, Sylvia. Yeah, thank you, Randa. Do you, where do you buy your oil? Your frankincense oil right well um there there is um something i think it's called young living is one another one is quintessence and julie buys hers from doTERRA oh. d-o-t-e-r-r-a 
Um, so it's quite a bit cheaper from quintessence, so it's probably not as pure. Young Living uh, and Roundtree used to get her from there. So but, is that undiluted without it being in a carrier oil? Or? So that'll be undiluted. Um, Put it in it a looks like it, so when when I'm um, when I'm using frankincense. I'm normally just inhaling it because it's very, very fragrant uh, um, and vaporous. Um, but when I have uh, sometimes put a little drop under my tongue at each side, um, and occasionally I've put a drop on neat, but when you do that, they say it can, it's so powerful, it can over. So you are better to just dilute it and maybe dilute it with a bit of olive oil, a bit of myrrh if you're going to apply it directly. And also, there is a recipe, isn't there, in one of the Psalms for oil, for some anointing oil. Is that relevant? Well, you're actually forbidden to reproduce that. But it's a wonderful study. <laughs> Everything that's in that anointing oil is just wonderful. Because um, there's a monastery somewhere in Wales that produces it, I understand. Yeah, it'll have to produce it slightly modified because it's forbidden on pain of death to reproduce it exactly, according, particularly to sell. Um, the, uh, that's the incense and the anointing oil. It comes with a strong warning. <laughs> oh. So that's it. So, um, yeah, we'll, we'll be having another one next month. But, um, you know, I, 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 I know there was 22 on today, but, you know, we really need to see the body responding in greater numbers than this to to the challenge that's lying ahead of us. So encourage someone to come on with you next time and uh, let's begin to make the church um, a force to be reckoned with. We should be a threat to every demonic entity there, that, that there is. <laughs> so, no wonder he didn't want me to say that. So thank you, Annette, for um, doing it on your phone in the end, though you had no internet. Sorry there was no worship, but you know that you're all loved and uh, appreciated. Got Malcolm heading on Friday. He's amazing. So don't miss him. And, uh, yeah, we'll see you all soon. Lots of love. Mm. Shalom. 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 Thank you, Brenda. Thank you, Annette. Yes. Thank you, everybody. Yes. Yes. Lord bless you all. Thank you, everyone. God bless. Bye. God bless you. Bye. I'm leaving. I'm leaving quickly because I have a phone call with Derek Walker. In the moment. All right. Bless you. Bye. Bye. <laughs>